Good morning. I'm glad to be here, and I hope you are too. The only thing I uh, got to say about this sermon is I'm not sure whether I need to preach it or not, because the name of it is, is it's a waste of time. <laughs> have you ever said, I don't have time? Have you ever just said that to somebody? I just don't have time. Most of us tend to approach time from an attitude of scarcity. We just don't have enough. I only have so much time, and my time is currently used up doing X and Y. Therefore, I do not have time for Z. The problem is that this statement is false, or it's a lie. And let me show you why. Have you ever had a lot of things going on in your life when suddenly there was a crisis in your family. Like someone dies, or someone has a serious heart attack and has to have surgery, or a crime committed against your family or somebody you know. Or your mom may call you and say, I think your dad's dying. Do you tell her, I don't have time? That would never happen. Let's face it, that would never happen. Not ever. Of course not. Somehow, no matter what, is take, what it takes, you'll be there, you'll find a way, and you always can when you need to. The truth is that we can always find time. This applies to money as well. When not doing so will produce a consequence that we don't want to deal with. The truth is that we can always find time. But... We do it because we don't, want to, we don't want to face the consequences of not taking the time to do that. You always can when you need to. The truth is that we always can find time. We know this is truth because we have experienced how it works. We have said we didn't have time for no more things in our lives and all of a sudden we figure out a way to make something else work. And sometimes it seems like there's not one single second left in the day, but yet we still have things to do. Take out your cell phone for me, would you? Just take out your cell phone for a moment. Does this look like a dangerous... Oh, wait a minute. What's that? Oh, wait a minute. I, I need to take this. Hold on. Hello? Greg? What'd you need, bud? Hmm, okay. Well, how's that job hunting doing? Good? Oh, okay. Well, I hope you get it. I guess you're going to you're gonna find out in a week or so. Okay, well, I'd like to chit-chat, but i got some people waiting here, okay? So i got to go. And now, I, uh, this sermon's for me just as well as it is for you. And you'll find out why. I got this game I like to play. It's called Free Cell. I don't know whether anybody ever played it or not, but it's uh, it's uh, like a solitaire game, okay? You guys wouldn't mind if I sat here for a few minutes and played this, would you? Because it, it really relaxes me, and, and I always use the excuse when I'm playing that I'm getting old, and I gotta, I gotta do this so it keeps my, you know, my hand and eye coordination going, you know what I mean? It keeps me from getting Alzheimer's, you know? So if you don't mind, I'd like to do that, okay? So just let me play this for just a few seconds here. Okay. Now I want you to hold up your cell phone for a minute. You think this is dangerous? You think your phone's dangerous? Where do you keep it when you sleep? Right beside you, okay? Now... How did you feel when I was talking to Greg and not paying any attention to you guys? And how did you feel when I was sitting here playing my game and not paying any attention to you guys? He probably felt pretty strange, really. He probably said, what's this nut doing? What's he doing? He might be out of his mind. Well, we already know he's out of his mind, so we'll just, we'll just wait and see. We'll let him settle down. We'll see what he's going to do next, okay? Now I want to take it one step further. How do you think God feels when you waste time? 
Now, I'm not saying that you don't have recreation. I got recreation. Like I said, I like to play that game. I like to do that. Mary went out with someone. I'm, I'm telling on Mary too here, but Mary went out with someone, a friend, a very close friend of hers the other day. She does have more than one friend. And a friend that she was telling, she, she bugs to death out of me because when we're driving down the road to come to church, she's playing her game on her phone, okay? And, well, if I was sitting over there, I'd probably be playing the game too, okay? So this lady told her, she said, well, when, when you're driving to church, you need to get prepared for worship. We talked about that in class a little bit this morning, about getting prepared for worship. So I thought to myself, this morning I want to talk to you about this dangerous little piece of equipment right here, and I'm going to let you know why it's so dangerous. Mm -hmm. I keep mine right beside my recliner. I have to sleep in a recliner because of my back injury. So I keep it right beside me. I, I make sure that I don't get any notifications during the night or anything like that, but I leave the volume up in case someone would call me in, you know, in an emergency or something like that. I keep it like that. Okay. But I thought to myself, what does this little box mean to me? What I want to talk to you about this morning is this. You know the stealing power of this for your time? It's just a small little innocent device. I may lean towards the believing the hooey about the health risks of mobile phones, you know, the murky reports about phones admitting a form of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation that can be absorbed by the body tissues around where you're holding the phone. But we all know that's nonsense. But I'm not actually sure the radiation is the most dangerous thing about my my beloved device. It's what it whispers to me every single morning of my life since it has come into my life and into our apartment. It's my alarm so it wakes me up. So it gets my undivided attention right off the bat, okay? There it is living with us in our apartment. Two of them. We got two of them living with us. And no sooner than I turn it on, turn the alarm off, do I hear that familiar, exciting whisper emanating from my gadget. You know that whisper. You've all heard it. Whatever it may be, even if you said it at night for do not disturb, the voice still cuts through. Good morning, Douglas. It calls me by my first name just to get the agitation started because that's how my mother used to say to me when I did something wrong. Douglas, guess what? You missed a lot of stuff while you were sleeping. You know I don't sleep. I work 24-7 as if to be complaining. While you were sleeping, emails came in from everywhere. Work emails, friends emails, and other emails you've subscribed to are eagerly waiting for you to open them. Don't you want to be on, be in the know as soon as possible to start your day? Things have been going on. Come on, open them apps. Just do it right now. Also, text. I have a random text for you from the people who decided you to send you after your crazy bedtime of 10 o'clock. And by the way, what's this bad habit I've heard I've gotten into, that you've gotten into? You're not looking at me every night for an hour before you go to bed. We need to break that little cycle. I have pretty lights to emit in your eyes. And there's more. Our magical friend, the internet, has been absolutely abuzz with activity while you were asleep. News, commentary, opinions galore, and even cute pictures of little puppies prancing around in tutus. 
They're all waiting your presence to see them. Read them, watch them, and hear what they have to say. C.S. Lewis said something about the listening battle we face with, we're faced with each day. Before we all end up carrying mobile phone, before we all ended up carrying the mobile phone and offered a suggestion on how to handle it, here's his suggestion. It comes the very moment you wake up each morning, all your wishes and hopes from the day rush at you like a wild animal, and the first job each morning consists of simply in shoving them all back and listening to the other voices, taking that other point of view, letting that other larger, stronger, quieter life come flowing in, and so on, all day standing back from all your natural fussings and frettings and just coming in out of the wind. How many times do you need to be told you can't watch TV all the time and expect to hear the voice of God? With that said, I've been giving it some thought. I've come to this conclusion. My cell phone and a lot of other things in my life are dangerous to me. And the reason I say that is because they take up a lot of my time. I send out a Bible verse in the morning, and the minute I hit the Facebook to put that verse on, I have to say to myself, Douglas, put the verse on Facebook and put the phone down. Because if I don't, what's going to happen? I'm going to scan Facebook for maybe an hour. Who knows how long I'm going to be on. And the only way I can change that is to do it. I just have to do it. I have to take the initiative to do that. But first, we must resist that power. It's sitting there, it's looking at you, it's whispering them little words, letting you know. And we have to win. We must win this battle because if we don't, We're going to fret away a lot of time that we could be doing God's work. We could be doing praying. We could be reading the Bible. We could be studying God's Word. You don't allow your phone in the morning to deliver those whisperings. You listen to your own voice and not to it. And you have to actually groom yourself in order to do that to keep it from being a waste of time in fact you may want to do something even really strange you may want to power your phone down oh my turn it off come on we can't do that right we would be disconnected if we turned it off right we have to be connected to the outside world now don't get me wrong, I love having my cell phone if I break down along the road. Or if I get into some kind of trouble, I love to have my cell phone. Or if there's an emergency in the family or something like that, I love to have that cell phone. But the idea is we can't let it control us. We can't let us take control and waste all that time. I have a story here I want to, I want to tell you. Imagine that there are several men in a locker room of a private club after exercising. Suddenly a cell phone that was on, the, on one of the benches rings. A man picks it up and the following conversation ensues. Hello, honey, it's me, sugar. Are you at the club? Yes. Great, I'm at the mall. Two blocks from where you are. I saw a beautiful mink, mink coat. It's absolutely gorgeous. Can I buy it? What's the price? Oh, it's only $1,500. Well, okay, go ahead and get it. If you like it that, that much, go ahead and get it. Oh, I also stopped by the Mercedes dealership and saw that 2021 model. I saw one I really liked. I spoke with a salesman and he gave me a really good price. And since we need to exchange that BMW we bought last year, well, what was the price he quoted you? 
Oh, about 190000 Okay, but for that price, I want it with all the options. Great, before we hang up, something else. What? It might look like a lot, but I was reconciling the bank account, and I stopped by the real estate agent this morning, and I saw the house we had looked at last year. It's on sale, remember? The one with the pool, the English garden, acre of park area, beachfront property. How much are they asking? Oh, about four, 450000 A magnificent price, and I see that when we have that much in, in the bank to cover it, well, go ahead and buy it, but just bid four twenty, okay? Okay, sweetie. Thanks. I'll see you later. I love you. Bye. I do too. The man hangs up the phone, closes the, fl the flap on the phone, raises his hand holding the phone up and says, does anyone know who this phone belongs to? <laughs> now that's a dilemma, right? Now let's imagine when the woman who called in the, sto in the story meets up with her, uh, her real honey, she will be called to give an account for her actions and a judgment's going to be made. But one thing we know for sure is that we all will face a judgment by our God and be called to give an account for our actions. If God would ask you right here at this moment how much time you have wasted on your cell phone or on your computer that you could have been using in studying or even maybe worse yet, attending church. Missing church because you're doing something else. 2 Corinthians 5.10, which was our text, tells us that we're all going to stand before that judgment seat of God, every one of us. And we're going to have to make an account for everything that we did. She might say that she tried to get permission or authority for what she did and that she was deceived. We need to be careful not to be deceived. God expects us to know Him and follow Him. Amen. Very important statement right here. I had a woman say to me one time, I asked her if she was baptized, and she said yes. And I said, were you sprinkled or immersed? She said, I was sprinkled. And I said, well, after going through this study, what do you think about your baptism? And she said to me, Doug, I'll have that discussion with God when I get to heaven. That's even sadder yet because guess what? There's not going to be any conversation with God in heaven. You might be praising Him because you're a Christian and thanking Him because Jesus came down and got us or you went there after you passed. But there, you won't be debating with Him about what you did here on earth. John 10, 27 reads, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He also specifically warns us not to be deceived. In 2 Timothy 3, 13 through 14, it reads, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And also in Matthew 24, 24 through 26, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders, of wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out, or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. This woman listened to what she thought was an authority. Now what authority do we have for our salvation? The Bible, right? That's the authority we have for 
our salvation. It doesn't matter what I preach from this pulpit and what I tell you, you better make sure that I'm telling you the truth. You better make sure that it's scriptural. Because you're not going to be able to go to heaven and say, well, Doug told me that. God's not going to, that's not going to fly with God. She listened to one who had authority to give an answer. What will we do? Will we listen to those who say, attend the church of your choice? I love that comment. Attend the church of your choice. When I was a kid, they used to put that on a bill, billboard. Now they don't say anything about church at all, which is even worse yet. But they used to have that on billboards when I was younger. They put on and put on, and you see it on the TV too. They they do an advertisement. It's a attend the church of your choice. Is there more than one church? No, there's only one Lord's church. We need to listen to God who tells us the truth. See, there's my phone calling me right now. See that? Trying to get me to lure, lure over there. I can look at it if you want, but no, no, I won't. I'll leave it alone. Ephesians 4, 4 through 16 reads, There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to you, each one of us, but to each one of us, grace will was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascends on high, he leads captivity captive. He gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fit, fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. We have to know the truth. We have to live the truth. We can't let things in life lead us astray. We will listen to those who say, just accept Jesus into your heart. Or shall we listen to God when he tells us to repent and be baptized for the remission of our sins? Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way that the church grows, is that way. And we have to be a part of making that growth. Are you afraid to say something sometimes? Because if you are, that line forms behind me. But we have to. We have to speak freely about Jesus and we have to tell people why we're so happy. When you come to church, do you feel like you're coming to a funeral? Or do you feel like you're coming to worship? I'll tell you what, the singing sounded really good today. Really good. And uh, I'm glad that we have people that actually get into singing and really get into it. In Mark 7, 6-7 it reads, He answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. We have to remember that God is our authority in His Word. It's the only thing that we have that is in authority. But remember, God has the authority 
but it's the word that's going to judge us. I, I really kind of get upset with people when they say, don't judge me. Well, if I read a piece of scripture that judges you, I'm sorry. Well, maybe I'm not sorry. But it's just like the cell phone thing. Like I said, this sermon was for me just as much as it was for you because I'll tell you what, I fret a lot of time away. I did start doing one thing now when I'm driving to church. I usually put the phone on the Bible reading and just have the Bible read to me. At least I'm getting that portion of it at that time. In John 12, 48, it reads, He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. There won't be any defending yourself or anything. Once you close your eyes and leave this earth or Jesus comes and gets us, the decision will have already been made. This week, I want us to consciously think about the time we waste on our phones and at other things that we like to do. And I'm not telling you to be a someone that doesn't do any kind of recreation at all. I'm not saying that, not one bit, because that fits into life just like everything else does. You have to make it fit. But God has to fit in there on the top shelf, not on the second, third, or fourth shelf. He's got to be on that top shelf. God work, God's Word can get you to heaven, but your phone can't. If you have a need this morning to be baptized, we could do that for you. Or if you have need for the prayers of the church, we can also pray with you. Please come as we stand and sing.